Well, hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Richard, and this is Lap of the World, your home for road trips and racetracks, or of late, uh, first-generation NSX repair and trivia. Um, <laughs> if either of those things, though, uh, tickles your fancy, then please consider a gentle caress of the subscribe button down below, as that helps me out, and it will let you know then if I upload any subsequent videos into either of those categories. Today we are coming at you with something of a PSA for the first generation NSX owners among you. Uh, although this could be applicable to any, probably any similar period uh, Japanese car. I, you know, your Supras and uh, Skylines, RX-7s, things like that. Uh, because a lot of the electronics on, you know, between Honda and Toyota and Nissan and other, you know, uh, Mazda, a lot of those companies, I think, got some of their electronics from probably the same factories as far as the small components, and we are indeed talking about small components today. Uh, but the affliction, that is to say, the affliction that I'm, we're going to talk about is not necessarily unique to the first generation NSX or its contemporary Honda Acura family. So, what are we talking about today? Well, if if those of you that own NSXs may already be aware of this if you are dutifully joined to the NSX Club of America because you will get their magazine. In the third issue for 2019 of NSX Driver, there are a couple of articles of note. Uh, the first details a lovely mountain drive in the uh, Smoky Mountains that happened last year and was organized by one of the more intelligent and attractive members of the club, uh, who also happens to be my wife. And the other article is the one we're actually interested in for our video today. And that is towards the end of the magazine. It is called, um, I think, The Capacitor Plague uh, by one of our longtime members and contributors who we'll just call Honcho after his uh, forum handle. But uh, I won't detail the article in depth in this video. Uh, <laughs> the magazine is a perk of membership, and I'm not going to circumvent that process for my own gain here. But uh, what we will do is kind of summarize the main point, and that is you should pay some mind to the capacitors behind your dashboard. Uh, your instrument cluster, uh, in the same way that the capacitors can fail, as I showed in my last video, uh, on your Bose sound system, the capacitors can also fail on the back of the instrument cluster. Now, there can be symptoms of this, and there may not be symptoms of this. In the case cited in the article, the first symptom of it was a small fire that was fortunately caught before it did any more extensive damage to the car, but nonetheless required a quite expensive replacement of the instrument cluster itself. So, uh, <laughs> that got me thinking, given the, uh, the relative age is one of the, it was among the, among the oldest NSXs in a 92 model year car, uh, that clearly had some components in it built in 1990, if the uh, speakers were any evidence. And having 283,000 miles on it, it's seen some use, and those capacitors have been given a workout. So I am for once getting ahead of a problem, I hope, and I'm going to preemptively pull my instrument cluster and mail it off to NSX E-Repair, the same place I sent the speakers, uh, to have the capacitors replaced preemptively with more mod with capacitors that use better, more modern technology, but accomplish the same thing. Uh, and they typically have a longer lifespan. I think I read um, Brian, the, um, the proprietor of NSX E-Repair, I think cites that he would expect the new capacitors that he puts in to last something like 20 years um, at the very least. <laughs> so although it is something that uh, that you might have to have re-redone, the service interval is significant. So it's not really something that's going to hit you up all the time. I'm just trying to get it all done at once so I can just get back to enjoying the car once we've been sort of released back into the world. So I'm not going to do a complete walkthrough as I did with the uh, speakers because there, there are already existing very detailed uh, photo documented walkthroughs on the internet as to how to remove the instrument cluster. I will put a link to one of those below on the NSX Prime forums, uh, just for reference. But uh, for now, I'm going to get to work.
Well, thanks in part to the fact that I've done this before once, but also thanks in part as well to uh, the wonderfully thorough and well-illustrated walkthrough on the forum. Uh, I was able to remove the gauge cluster with minimal shenanigans, and I have it back here on the bench. Now, I did want to show you a couple of things uh, before I box it up and ship it off, uh, since I actually thought to do that this time where I didn't with the speakers. Uh, let's take this back cover off. Now, I'll put this on because it's a protective piece that covers up the circuit board, but I kind of want to take that off and see what's underneath, uh, and let's see what we're actually sending away here. Uh, is there any evidence that there would be shenanigans afoot? Let's take a look. Oh, that looks crusty. Hang on, I'm going to zoom in here real quick. So most of the board, to my untrained eye at least, looks okay from this side. However, uh, even with no experience, this section here that you can see uh, that I'm zoomed in on, that looks distinctly crusty. Uh, now, again, that, you know, I am I am not an uh, an electronics expert by any stretch, so you know that could be just dirt or debris, but that could have also been you know best case an instrument failure waiting to happen, or worst case a car fire. So yeah, I feel a lot better about uh, spending the extra little bit of extra time and money to go ahead and get this sent off while I'm not driving the car and have it taken care of, get some new capacitors on the board, get it cleaned up. Uh, and have hopefully less to worry about. Uh, you know, the last thing I would want is, you know, somewhere down the road, maybe on the way to, you know, Expo later this year in the middle of nowhere, Montana, or wherever, whatever route we decide to choose, uh, you know, getting stranded with a problem or, uh, you know, potentially having the car damaged in an, either in an irreparable way or a way that's significantly more expensive to repair than just having some new capacitor soldered on a board and having an expert take a look at it uh, before things actually uh, get too far. Uh, again, my car is kind of an outlier usage case wise from a mileage standpoint, but I suspect if you have any sort of early 90s Japanese car that uses this style of, I think they're called electrolytic uh, capacitors, uh, I'll correct myself in the description if I'm wrong there, but if it uses that style of capacitor, it could be susceptible to, to this issue. Uh, so it would be something good to keep track of. But that is my that is my PSA for the day for the NSX crowd and indeed any sort of the vintage Japanese car crowd uh, as a whole. Uh, <laughs> maybe a good time to at least give your circuit boards a good look over uh, and find your uh, relevant community expert uh, to maybe have them fixed before things actually go wrong. Anyway, I hope you found the video informative, if not entertaining. <laughs> Uh, and uh, let's keep the knowledge going. If you, if you know something I've missed, uh, have something to add to the conversation, details that I've gotten wrong, please put them in the comments below. That way we as a community, you know, we have kind of the magazine side covered with uh, Honcho's article and NSX Driver. There have been a couple of threads on this, I think, on the NSX Prime Forum. I know it's come up on the Facebook groups. Now we've covered YouTube, uh, if we hadn't already. So... Uh, <laughs> So yeah, let's keep the ball rolling there. Again, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, please consider subscribing. Drop a like if the video if you, if you like the video. <laughs> and uh, otherwise, uh, I'm Richard. This is Lap of the World, and I will see you guys in the next video, if not at the track. <laughs>